great and almighty God wants to create different and out of the ordinary things in this world, the beautiful gardens and the flower beds and the plains of the earth and the sciences to which we learn from and music we listen to. He assigns his wishes and desires of all these things to his greatest creations of all mankind. Mankind has the greatest potential to make their desires come to life. So from the desires of mankind, these creations come to be. Whatever you see through your eyes in this world, you can be sure that a world exists in them. scared for you today because of the things that that man dressed in black said to you. That man can't really do any harm, right? Can he, Father? Hmm. God is aware of all the intentions we hold inside of all of us, of all mankind. In the end, he will support those with a just purpose, right? <laughs> Listen carefully now, Jalal Adin. The first ant over there says here, Look carefully at all these beautiful designs which this reed pen here has created. These designs are more beautiful than the most precious of all jasmines. And the second ant over here says, no, you are wrong. These designs aren't from the reed pen at all. They all come from the one who firmly holds the reed pen in his hands and begins to twist and turn it. But they are actually both wrong in the end. When they go back to their nest at night and they tell their oldest knowledgeable about all of what they have discussed today, he will then turn to the both of them and say that the creator of all these designs you saw before you is neither the reed pen nor the finger. But God, all that you see is from the power of the great almighty God. Jalal Adin, I want you to please make a vow to your brother in the presence of your mother. I've already done so in the presence of so many others. Well, I do not care about the rest. Got Adin, Jalal Adin, you two are here both from the same flesh and blood, are you not? Make a vow to your brother that you will remain loyal to him to your last breath. I promise this to you. The blood that runs through the veins of your mother will now become the price of your vow. Do you agree? I agree. 
from now on, if an emir of the land decides to give you the tax of the land, you'd better not show any resistance. Show him the large treasury of the Quaris M. King. I should check, you say. If you do truly fear for the safety and life of your precious son, you have to make him forget about being the king. If not, then his enemies might make nice trophies of his precious little eyes and wear it around their dirty necks. If it isn't the great master Baha Eddin Valad. My dear Syed Boran, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> Come inside. It's really great seeing you again. When did you return from your travels? Yesterday. It was past the evening when I arrived at the city gates. Ah, welcome ah. indeed. Ugh. Give me news about our sheikh, Najmadin Kobra. Is he still well these days? He sent his good regards and has prayed for you every day since you last seen each other. What is he up to there? <sighs> he likes to stare at the horizon. What do you mean, stare at the horizon? I'm sure you've already heard what happened to the Mongol merchants. Hmm. It is being said that because of the careless incompetence of the Sultan and his royal court and his men over there, that Cengiz will definitely attack Iran because of this. The great sheikh still lives in the walls of the Khwarazm kingdom. The Tatars and Mongols will now definitely get their hands on him. Why doesn't he leave while he can? The sheikh believes the Mongols are non-believers and believes there will be a holy war waged against them. Is this in order? He thinks it will be. Can I please say something to you, Bahai Din Velad? Say. You suggest that Sheikh Najmedin Kobra should leave the city and you believe that this is the best option for him. Why don't you do the same as well? You mean leave where I am? The people were recounting the argument you had earlier with the head judge, Sheikh Kamal Eddin, the man who was personally appointed by the Sultan himself. Those who love you and you know that there are many of these good people in the city who love you, and now worried about your life and the safety of your lovely family as well. Sayyid Boran, I am always ready to sacrifice my life, and whichever corner God wants me to then go to. I have no choice but to go. I have no say in it. You can see how well kept it all is, and how well watered the roots in the ground of the strong big tree really is from the branches and the leaves and all of the sweet, the fruit that grow on the tree. And it is obvious by looking which tree actually isn't watered, because the tree will appear withered down. There lies a secret in all of the commotion of words spoken. The secret is that a lesson is being taught, and from a word suggestions are made. I'm here. Brother, where are you? Coming. I'm coming. Uh, come over here, boy. Uh, uh. Let me see you. Let me see what happened. How did you go? Let me see. Don't scare me like that. Come inside. Come. Hey. Hey, little boy. So naughty. He's like a crazy fire, you know. Stay right here till I get back. Even if I were a fire... I would have been put out when I fell into the water. You have no manners, you careless little boy. Thank God you're okay. Uh, uh, oh, son, come. Uh, uh, Sayyid Boran, uh, 
I want to please leave Jalal Eddin in your good hands if possible. Jalal Eddin? Why would you want to do that? I want you to be his tutor, please. You want me to be his tutor? No offense, but being a tutor means being the instructor of a child of a great person. There's no doubt that Jalal Eddin is the son of a great Sayyid man. Quran, you have for years been a truly exceptional teacher. And I today can claim that at this point I know you better than you know yourself. I believe that you are the best tutor for Jalal Eddin. I want you to teach him and be his instructor. Please accept my wish. Oh, I know you. Please accept. Of course I will. I mean, this is the least I, your former student, can do for his master. But tell me one thing. Why won't you send him to school? I did try. But he cannot tolerate school at all. He becomes a tad restless and he is very unpleasant. These are all good traits of a smart boy. I want you to make him a good man with truly great insight. Intelligent and decisive. I can see he already has what it takes. I have to pay much attention to him then. I now leave him in your capable care. You are now his tutor. Sayed Baran. I want you here now to please make me a promise. To please look after him everywhere he goes and always, even long after my death. But, and? Don't let his acumen and intelligence be used in the wrong way. They say that the man Syed Boran is indeed a very fine speaker of note, but uses a lot of Sanai's poetry in many of his speeches. The Syed says, what they say is the same as saying that the sun in the sky is good, but this has its own flaws. They say repeating Sanai's wise words is revealing his words. And his words shed light on things like the sun does daily. And it's in the light of the sun that you can see all flaws. The purpose of the great white light coming from the sun is that it reveals all things. I will give these to a good child who will tell me a great story and find the maxim in it. What happened? Don't you want almonds or don't you have a story to tell? I'm not such a small child to tell you a story. You are not a child, you say? Then what are you? I am a young Baha Eddin who will soon become the Sultan of Scholars. Is that so? So you want to like Baha Eddin, I see? The Sultan of Scholars of Khorasan. Very well. These almonds will then belong to anyone who can tell a great story like the Sultan of Scholars and find a maxim within the story itself. Do you want me to tell you the story of a parrot? What happened to that parrot you speak of? A man bought a parrot from a shopkeeper in the market. He then took the bird home, but the parrot was sick. I mean, it wasn't really sick. Mm -hmm. It pretended to be until the buyer brought back the parrot to the shopkeeper. Be silent. Sorry, D. <laughs> 
Take your swords out now, men. Don't leave a single one of them alive here. If any of them try to escape now, stop them and kill their horses too. Kill them! Az a fiat vobrida, del roz khod varchanda, ba chiz di gar zenda, del roz khod varchanda. با چیز دیگر زنده اقل و دل و اندیشه را اقل و دل و اندیشه را از بی خوب و سوزیده The state of being safe in a single person's life does not necessarily come with particular signs. When a person is confronted with fear, one gives away his possessions, another gives away his life. One of them fasts, another one prays. One gives ten rupats, another a hundred rupats. So it is actually quite easy to distinguish them at certain times. They can easily be pointed out. <laughs> 